This is ITV. Certainly the best. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, viewers. And I have a an amazing gentleman. He has never been on our show. This is the first time. Yeah. He is a um, barrister, a gay and woman. Good afternoon, listeners. Okay, yes. Barrister, a gay and woman. This is Barrister, a gay and woman. He is a retired clerk from the Joe State House of Assembly and the Pope, a legal practitioner. It's good to have you on the show today. Thank you very much. All right. Seated next to me is another lawyer. Thank you very much. All right, we're talking about very great corruption. In May 2016, the National Bureau of Statistics brought out the report and they claimed that it was uh, a one year analysis from 2015 to 2016. And we're still waiting for a detailed one for this year, 2017. But so far, the report was that we have 95% um, of Nigerians indulging in bribery. They either didn't or they are collecting. And we also have uh, the estimated, the National Bureau of Statistics estimated the value of bribes paid to public officials, now not private sector, public officials by Nigerians to be about 400 billion naira. Now that's a huge sum. I'm not talking about millions, I'm talking about billions, 400 billion naira to the public sector. We also have 28% uh, of our average monthly pay, our, our salary, we actually spend it driving maybe the police or customs or something, we spend 28% of our salaries to pay bribes. Then this study also revealed that Nigerian police is actually by, is by far the most corrupt public institution in Nigeria. I don't know if you agree with that, but the National Bureau of Statistics also said following closely, we have judges and prosecutors, we're coming in a very close second, and I have some lawyers in the house, okay? And um, we also have car registration offices, um, car licensing offices, we have tax and revenue offices, agencies also being extremely corrupt in the public sector. And now the public sector is not just all that we have that are corrupt, the private sector is equally corrupt too. And topping the list in the private sector, we have, um, we have a private, we had an insurance company, followed by teachers, and then private, doctors who work in private establishments. These are all very critical people, very important. The teachers and the doctors, I must say, are needed for a developing nation or even a developed nation. But yet we are saying that this, according to National Bureau of Statistics, that the most corrupt. I want to have your personal opinion of all this I have said. What do you think about this results? Is it overblown? Is it underwritten? And how do you just feel about this? I'm going to start with you. Well, the, the statistics are, they are from government, uh, government agencies. Uh, National Bureau of Statistics is the body charged with the responsibility of collating statistics around the country and presenting them uh, to the public. So we should believe them. I, I must say, when they say 95% of Nigerians give or receive bribe, what that means is that they say 5% that doesn't. That's the one that bothers me. I don't know where the 5% is. Because we need to understand that it's both conscious and unconscious. What is corruption? Corruption is a deviation from the standard norm. If there is a way to do things, the moment we deviate from it, no matter how little, it becomes corruption. That now, of course, um, every, every word, every nomenclature has its general semantic meaning and then of course the has the normal semantic meaning and then of course the general 
application meaning. That is the contextual, or uh, you know, if you like, um, contemporary meaning. So in Nigeria, corruption appears to be tied closely to official corruption, using your official position to secure an advantage, either for yourself or the, for the people around you. So inside corruption, we have bribery, we have nepotism, we have favoritism, and all of those subsets. Now, we need to understand why corruption has become very pervasive. And that is to put corruption into two jackets. One is what I, re I refer to as the classical corruption and then the cyclical corruption. The classical corruption is the one that is institutionalized by those who are in a position to make things happen. So essentially, the classical corruption comes from the top. The cyclical corruption is the one that goes around the society as a response to the, cl the classical corruption. In which case, don't look at anybody in Nigeria today who gives bribe from a negative perspective. The point I'm making, therefore, is this. If I, based on principle, refuse to give bribe today in Nigeria, will I ever get anything? It is like the famous statement of a patient dog eating the fattest bone. What we hear now is that the patient dog is likely to die of hunger because it's not likely to get any bone at all. So, the point I'm making is this. If you are sure as a Nigerian that you can get things done without having to give, then of course you won't give. Classical example, you mentioned the police, and I agree with that uh, take. The police institution is not an institution I like talking about because we need them, whether we like it or not. They say police is our friend. Some have said, if police is your friend, then you don't need an enemy. But having said that, if you are driving on the road today and the police stops you and they say they are checking, are we likely to ever have a situation where the police who checks you is satisfied that you have fulfilled all the requirements that will make you go? He, 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 he lets you go either because you have settled him, and in Nigeria it's settled. That's what we say. We don't say bribe. Either because you have settled him or he looks at you and he's not sure whether you can do him in, whether you have the power to do something to him. So what does he do? He says, oh God, anything for the boys. Your, your boys are being the son since so we are here. Whichever way you, he wants to get something. If he feels you can't do him anything, he will check this, check that, check that, check that, and if there is nothing, he can look for something in your car and say, where is the receipt to that thing? And you want to go somewhere. But the option you have is to write it out and say, well, take me to your superiors. He's likely to keep you there for another one hour before taking you to the station. When he takes you to the station, are you sure that his superior is not part of the, this web of corruption? Because we often hear that policemen who are sent on, uh, you know, they call it shadow now, uh, who are sent to, on checkpoints and all of that, need to make a return back to their superiors in the office. So if that is the situation, you are likely to get into deeper trouble when you go to make reports at the office. So if a Nigerian is sure that he will get justice in the end, I am telling you, that 95 will, will be reversed. The average Nigerian will not give if he knows that if he does the right thing, he can get justice. He can, he can have due process on his side. So it is a militarized and criminalized environment with all our public institutions involved that put every Nigerian in a position where we are helpless in fighting against corruption. That's why I say corruption is classical and it is cyclical. The one that ties most Nigerians into this web is the cyclical one, which is a reaction to the institutionalized corruption. You know, the, the report said um, judiciary is second to police from the National, National Bureau of Statistics. You are aware and you are very much in practice. How do you react to that analysis again? Well, I will first of all say that I know, as a matter of fact, there is uh, corruption is also in judiciary. I will not shy away from saying the truth being a practicing lawyer. And I know also there are issues that have come up, but I don't like blanket um, 
clothing of any situation that this uh, institution is corrupt or judiciary is corrupt. If there are cases mentioned, one can uh, address on it specifically. I know there are cases, especially in the lower courts, where there are issues, and uh, even sometimes it borders on uh, incompetence of the of the judicial officer, especially in the lower courts, area courts, Marie court, and some some magistrates. But you know, in the, in the high court and court of appeal and Supreme Court, when things happen, a lawyer can challenge the situation. If uh, if I am doing something and you want to be funny as a judge. I will say I will tell you, you know, there's a way you can carefully tell that my lord I will go no, um, higher. You know, it, it, mean, it means when you finish what you are doing here, there's a body language a lawyer will show. The judge will know that this matter will certainly not end in this court. So in that case, you know, there is a kind of check and balances. But I know if only there are cases. I will not stand here and say there are no cases of corruption in the judiciary. I, I will be deceiving myself. Yeah, I, I think that uh, this issue of corruption or bribery in Nigeria is not new. Yeah. Uh, if we recall the organizers of the very first coup d'etat in Nigeria in January 1966, finger corruption and what they call 10 percenters as, uh, as uh, those turned into country of Shazam, which was why they came. Well, that group didn't form any government, so uh, one wouldn't know how, they will, how far they would have gone with what they want they set up to do. And ever since, subsequent governments have been sermonizing and lamenting. The rate of corruption is high, this one is high. But none appeared to have been really ready to do anything about it. Save for, for example, the government of uh, President Tolosegun Basanjo, who established these two institutions that are fighting now, the FCC and the, and the uh, IRCC. He established. In fact, one of the former presidents uh, attempted to educate us on the difference between corruption and stealing. Uh, you know, I think he, he didn't do that successfully, uh, as if uh, there is a real di difference between, between them. So it's been, uh, we've been a long way into it. And uh, I, I think that we Nigerians appear to be uh, too much in a hurry. What I mean too much in a hurry, you, a policeman, like my friend talked about, a policeman stopping you. You are, you see, in most cases, in most cases, the, 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 the giver, the giver, in, I've seen many, many situations where the giver, even without the police asking him at all, he just dips and off he goes because he knows he's guilty already. Number one, yes. the vehicle is put on the road, has everything wrong about it. The papers are not there. His old driver, if you find out that this is not there, so he already knows. And he's so confident, look, I will go. When I get there, I will know what to do. So it's already in us. We are in the hurry. We don't believe in doing the right thing. I believe that. If your conscience is clear, I mean, you are driving your papers and everything and so on, everything is in order. You don't need to fear a policeman. If I can ask you, my friend said uh, that they hardly would say, I haven't looked at this, say, pass and go. I think on uh, several occasions they have asked me when I drive. So they look, they look at these papers and say, sir, go, thank you, like that. Occasionally, too, they say, ah, your boys have been in the sun. You know, they do such a lot of your water, whatever. You know, voluntarily on my own, without they are asking me, I give. You know, so I think this thing has been with us, and then it's going to be difficult to get out because uh, we, we, it has come to be seen as a uh, part of our life. Mm -hmm. you, you want to give so that you can get what you want quickly. Why are you so impatient? I think that is the problem. Normally, police arrest you and put you in, in, in detention. You want to get out the next hour. This cell or detention doesn't kill. So if you're anxious to get out, of course, the police might ask you, go and bring a baggage can not bring so much because you want to get out as if uh, they say you are in hellfire. Of course, you you baggage and you pay for it. I think we, sh we should insist on doing the right thing at all. If you do the right thing, like they say, the, the, the it is the guilt of conscience that fears that. I really don't know 
church. They go to the you just know that the roads are empty and everyone is trekking. And if you eventually find the boss, God help you like that day, you're going to pay through your nose. I suffered. <laughs> but they're still going to call for another inspection. And the same thing will happen again. And then they will call for another one. And the same thing will happen again. I just don't know why we're not seeing results. The bulk of the drivers are young people. The National Bureau of Statistics makes it with Transparency International proof that the most corrupt people and the most number of people who take bribes and give bribes are young people. People, the youths, people less than 50. Are we the most corrupt people? I'm going to ask you, Comrade Austin, do you believe that seriously? Do you believe that statement? Yeah, I mean, it, I mean it's, it's evident. It's uh, <laughs> the, the facts speak for itself. Look, uh, where one Esquire mentioned the, the impatience. The young, the, the young people are in a hurry. You, you, look, we, one of the most popular tunes uh, in recent times is You Hammer to Buy Hammer. <laughs> He's a famous musician, and he made it famous. And it was popular with the youths. You hammer, then you buy Hammer. We are in a hurry. We want, look, is, look, let, let, let's not treat this from the surface. The truth of the matter is that Nigerians are not different from other, other people in the world, other nationalities. The difference here is that when people know that they can get away with anything, they will do it even more. And I have said that the difference, for instance, between a place like the U.S. and here, is that when you they have a saying there, you do the crime, you do the time. So as you are doing the crime, you know that the state will seek you out and that you will pay for it. Here, when we do the crime, we are confident that we can beat it. We just talked about uh, corruption in the judiciary. It's bigger than that. The, is it not a matter that goes to, before the judiciary that the judiciary will make pronouncement on? That's it. Nigerians know that they can frustrate the process. And they are doing this employing institutions which have been so corrupted. Does it not bother you that when high profile arrests are made, the persons so arrested will just be smiling in the full glare of public television? And I often point out, why do you think he's smiling? My father told me. I don't know how to put it in English. You see, as on an area, you are going to have to be here. That's how you see why I can't put it in English. If a man knows that he is not going to be penalized for anything, they, they say when a man sends his son to go and steal, he doesn't walk stealthily. He breaks the door down. There is a power behind it. So before we begin to say, "Oh, every Nigerian is involved," has become our way of life. I maintain that the incidents of corruption that we are seeing all over the place, they are responses to a failed system. The, look, the system does not have a way to ensure that the criminal is brought to justice. And let me also say this. We are human beings. If I know that others are getting away with it, I am encouraged to go the same way because I know I will equally get away with it. There's deliberate acquiescence on the part of those who should punish. So, when you have a failed system such as that, corruption, of course, will thrive. I asked, now part of what I do led me to ask a Chinese, one, one firm that we, we threatened to close down, you know, uh, within town, owned by Chinese. And I got so, I got so angry that I had to ask, can you try this in your country? And he smiled and said, no, but we are in Nigeria. And that, is, that for me, that was a weighty statement. He can't try it in China, but he can try it here because, yes, he can beat the system. So this is, for me, more fundamental than every other thing. Lenin Sinai here talked about uh, People, you know, uh, police checks his paper and they let him go. They're sacred, you, sir. They know you can't do them in. <laughs> they are where 
they know what they are doing. They look at you and they say, if we try this one, there may be reprisal. So they let you go. Two, you have gotten to an age, sir. And that's where why people are saying that the problem is among the young people. I am not one of them. I used to say, let's, let's uh, give power to the youths. Let, let's handle back to them. My father told me, he said, look, if at the age of 70, I am afraid to die, something's wrong with me. So why would I be lying at 70? But 80 is not the lie. Now, if he looks at you, the patient, sir, you know, something that has become part of you is difficult to let it go. What took you to the age you are in now is a mixture of patience and character. Patience is actually a component of the character. Is the character there now among the young people? Why should he wait? And in any case, why do you tell him that he should, recently in, in, in a conference in Abuja that I was part of, a, 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 a legislator raised the point, however moot it was, that one of the problems he has with this fight against corruption is that when these people are, who are fighting corruption now, we are there, nobody bothered them, nobody talked about fight against corruption. Now, we are there now, we are, we are there, they are talking about fight against corruption. That's somebody who has been given a mandate by the people to go and use the resources that God has blessed all of us with for our own benefit. So he has told you clearly what his path is. Stop this fight against corruption, let me acquire my own first. That's where we are. I'm talking about the institutions, let's Police, yes. Judiciary, yes. But I tell you, that's the tip of the iceberg. In the civil service today, two of you will retire at the same time. Your own file, they will be looking for it. They can't see it. They will see the other one. They will process it. The other person will get paid. It will seem as if you offended the gods. And what language do we use? They say, you didn't push it. I'm telling you, sir, it's no longer bribery and corruption. We are the ones saying it here. Look, everybody will tell you you did not push it. What is the push? And I'm asking, is it a lorry that you go there to go and push in the office? They are saying that there are certain, certain proce processes that you need to oil, you need to lubricate. Somebody comes to you for help. Somebody has come to me for help. I said, look, you have to let me help me do this. And I said, well, that's my problem. If you believe that these papers are in order, I'll take them to the appropriate lorry. That's what I do. And then she still wasn't comfortable. She now said, you see, we are Nigerian. I want to, I'm even ready to do a deal with you. And I told my madam, you are insulting me. She is ready, like you said. Nobody has asked her now. She believes that that is the Nigerian system. So if I say I want to help you and I don't ask you for something, you don't believe that it will work. You don't believe I will do it until I say, what is my percentage? That's where we are. Yes, <laughs> I will tell you. Is, uh, <laughs> yeah, I will tell you. Uh, I'm, I'm happy this question came. Why <laughs> I my clients? I always tell them I, I find out fight from my chambers that if I must go to the police station, I only go to find out the extent of the investigations. <laughs> and I discover, and like uh, my senior colleague said here, we are impatient. I will tell them that cell will not kill you. Stand for your right. And I said, if I give them two days, they are not completed what they are doing, I will write a petition to the higher authority. And what does that mean? That they either release you on administrative bail or charge you to court, and we meet them in court. And I have done that several times, and they, uh, they angrily charge the person to court. But I know, most times, they're not, you know, <laughs> it's unfortunate. I'm not behind you. No, 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 no. <laughs> what I mean that the police will not go on out of their way 
What would be ordinary spelling? They say I'm robbing. So it's, it's no longer entitled to bail. <laughs> so we'll have a wicked system where people, when you are fighting for your right, the other person is also trying to uh, circumvent you. So actually, it's a terrible situation. But I stand, and I told I, I will <laughs> never belittle myself going to the police station to negotiate with anybody over bail. No, because. I feel I'm too. I have, I have <laughs> so since stopped going at all. All right. <laughs> you know, because they, at times you so, they so mess you up, you begin to wonder. <laughs> Hello. Mm -hmm. And there, boldly, you have the inscriptions. <laughs> but it's free. As a matter of fact, I think they launched it. <laughs> the so present so IG is launching the. Uh, yes. So what are we talking about? <laughs> you know? So this is an issue. But anyhow, I, I think that uh, the problem, like you, you asked. We got to where we are because of, I think, the, the, there has been a failure of uh, the process of national integration. Well, everybody now sees him, himself as a fa family belonging to this or belonging. Nobody's really Nigerian. Right. So we don't have, we, I think our leaders have failed us you know, along the line because they failed to, to imbue you know, the, the right national value, you know, that could make everybody proud as a Nigerian, you know. So for, for us, it's safe first. I mean, one American president, American president said, uh, think not what America can do for you, what what you can can do for, for you. for us here, you know, if the country wants to dial it, it die, it's for me first. I think that is an idea, idea. Mm -hmm. you know. So we don't have that, that, that Nigerian pride. No, ready, nobody, nobody is ready to sacrifice his life for this country. Nobody. You see, it boils down to the issue of standards and who you are. You see, when, when I look at the situation in Nigeria, people may preach a lot of things, but when situations come, you now find out who the personality behind that person. I, I don't want to use myself as an example, but I, have, I, I see positive tendency in everything that looks awkward. A policeman was traveling one day to Asaba to do a matter, it was in the morning, and I was stopped at uh, Ugoneki. He checked other person, he checked me, and left me there. And me, I, I just went off my glass, I kept, up, I, I kept quiet. At the point, and I'm wound down, I said, you have been keeping me, what, what's the problem? Then he now let me go. But on I leave, I, will, I could have felt that I, my time was wasted after I was going to court. But what did I, I saw it as a I said, maybe there was even an unforeseen <laughs> circumstances that God used this man to do. You see, there are certain things we must begin to think. Just don't think about what you want, I want to get out of issue. But believe first in yourself that you must, you must be a man of integrity. That if you are stopped over something, let's let, be, be, be conscious of your, the inner pr pride in you that I will do the right thing. So it's not, you know, it, I, I don't like a situation where people, because I, I, I want to get out of this issue, I bribe my way out of it. No, it will not help us. And that is why, like uh, uh, my senior colleague here said, you see, we need to go back to the black stars of the matter, integrity, merit, standards, and ensure that our, our institutions are internalized into doing the best standard practices and that's where we failed. Like uh, Comrade Sacre said, we're not recycling the situation because of the failed system, we now come back to be reacting to it. But I think that we could put it to a stop.
questions about this fight against corruption, which is the watchword of this administration. And then someone said that President Ruari is actually doing enough, he's trying his best to fight corruption, but the system is not just allowing him to fight it. But some others said he's not fighting corruption, he's made the fight against corruption seem like a personal vendetta where he's fighting a few corrupt people and not corruption itself. How would you rate the fight against corruption in this present administration? But what do you see around you? Yeah, I, I like rightly mentioned, I think uh, that was uh, fighting corruption was the, the, the uh, primary principle of the APC uh, when they contested the election 2015. As a matter of fact, I think that was the, um, the attraction That's a uh, the, the, the uh, Buhari presidency mm. uh, gave to Nigerians. Mm. So that's why they massively gave him the, the mandate. But two years down the line, I, I, don't, I think we are really not uh, making progress. Let me use that. You know, we are not making progress. Because, uh, like I mentioned earlier, Corruption in Nigeria is not new. It has been there. For one thing, it is good. He showed commitment. As a matter of fact, he, he went on to show his seriousness, you know, uh, about uh, um, eradicating this matter by saying that if we collectively do not kill the uh, kill corruption, corruption will uh, will kill us. But I think the war is not succeeding uh, because uh, number one, I think there has been too much uh, media trial. Mm. Uh, you know, because uh, if by the time you are showing somebody as having done this and having we're already condemning him, if not in the court of law, but in the court of public opinion, yeah. I think that is uh, that is not uh, it's, it's not um, it's not um, good enough. So uh, to that extent, it's not really. And then some others say that um, there has been instances of political victimization uh, that uh, they were targeted against mainly oppo the opposition party, mainly the PDP. And of course, there are instances. Police Amitou's case was one of them. And then there is this different dimension now that uh, those of them in the APC now, if uh, before they get caught, they quickly cross carpet to the uh, to the to the APC and their sins are, are forgiven. You know, so people still believe that it's, it's one-sided. You know, those who are opposed to your views, you rope uh, them in, and, and so on. So the, the belief is still there's a strong one. I think it's a major factor defeating the war against uh, against corruption. Uh, for I will give you two examples. Now, the former governor, a former governor now, well, I think five years or so, of uh, Akiti State, uh, has a, a pro panel sitting in, uh, in Akiti to try his misdeeds while in office. Yeah. That is number one. At the moment, I think it's Minister of Mines and something. Yeah. Ruti Miyamichi also has a pro panel sitting in, in, in Port Accord, you know, uh, about the crimes and things, corruption practices he did while he was governor of, of Rivers. <coughs> Meanwhile, he continues to be in the president's cabinet. I think in situations where things work, or if the president expects the world to succeed, the moment accusing figures are pointed at some of his, his cabinet members, I think that he should request them to step aside, to allow for proper investigation. Of course, if they are found clean at the end, they return to their, to their offices. Mm -hmm. But still keeping them there, when accusing fingers are pointing at them, and you say you are fighting a war on corruption, and you are keeping these corrupt ones in your cabinet, I think it doesn't tell uh, so the story of seriousness. That is, uh, that is one of the. So he needs to change his strategy. Yeah, yeah. And then the, for example, you, you, I think in the paper today or yesterday, you, you find that the, 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 the banks keep freezing and defreezing <laughs> under President Jonathan's account. Mm. <laughs> if the government believes that that woman has uh, skeletons in her cupboard, why not charge her properly <laughs> to a court of law? Today, one court give judgment freezing her, uh, her account. Tomorrow, the other court gives judgment, the freezing the same account and all that. So is uh, what has patient, the question is this, the question people ask, what has uh, the first lady, President John have done that other first ladies have not done? Yeah. And that is the question people are asking. So to that extent, I think that uh, the war is, uh, is defeating itself. Okay. okay, and I'm just going to ask you this question quickly, Corinne. Um, which is worse? The 400 billion naira we spend bribing the common man, like 95% of them, and um, the billions of dollars taken out of our shores by a few of them. Which one is worse for the system? It's, I mean, there's no, there's no scale to measure which one harms the system more. 
uh, unless you now want to look at the quantum. Uh, for every one dollar right now, we are talking about almost 400 naira. So if you find that billions of dollars have escaped this country through certain fingers, what that means is that we are actually having money outside that can actually build a new country for us. The kind of figures I hear. And then we have, we, we can't forget that even in recent times, we, you, they bust into a building and bring out 40 something million dollars. And I'm not talking of Naira. So, I'm sure you have been to the US, I uh, have mm -hmm. the privilege of just not going. Yeah. A hundred dollar in America, you bring it out in Walmart? Uh -huh. Hundred dollar, mm -hmm. one sheet? And in Nigeria, where they don't use dollars, yes. where we use Naira, you bust into a building, you bring out 40 something million dollars. In that same building, you have hundreds of thousands of pounds. pounds. In that same building, you have hundreds of thousands of euros. It's not a foreign exchange market, market, a private yeah. building. And as I speak to you, nobody knows. I, I don't want to go into the question you asked uh, the, the learned gentleman whether they are fighting corruption. As far as I'm concerned, the willingness may have been there, but the, 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 the war ended the moment it started. Because I tell you this, you can't use fire to quench fire. What extinguishes fire is water. You cannot want to fight corruption and use military means in a democratic setting. It's not going to. You throw away the rule of law and say it doesn't matter. We now have a bit, reign of arbitrariness. So, if, if the fight against corruption is not citizens-led, if you don't lead Nigerians into that fight, then you have lost it. Don't forget, I voted for Buhari and I asked a few people whom I have influence over to do so because of the promise to fight corruption. This is where the irony is, a paradox really. If Nigerians voted for a man because they wanted him to come and fight corruption, it goes back to what Abbas Lin Esquire says, that there is hope mm -hmm. in the fight against corruption. That's why I talked about the cyclical and the classical. Nigerians are involved in corruption simply because either they feel others are benefiting and nothing is happening to them, they should also just go along, and therefore they feel cheated if they don't do it, or they have no choice. That's why any plan to fight corruption must look at our economy, where we were and where we are today. At a time came, public schools completely failed in this country. People were forced to not take their children to private schools. How many people actually honestly working at the level of level six downwards can actually afford the kind of school fees and buy books that, you know, that are prevalent in private schools? And then pay rent with the kind of rents that you find now. And then go to the hospital and get drugs when there is no uh, system in place for healthcare. And they pay the kind of exorbitant transport. You know what you pay from here to Ringo, and then before you now find your way to your. So we are having slave salaries. A, a society that has slave wages, where others are, who work, who do nothing, are going away with millions of dollars. That society is asking for corruption. If you ask me, the corruption that is coming to Nigeria is still doing breakdowns in Saudi Arabia. It hasn't come yet. What we have now is no corruption. It is coming on the way. As long as you keep paying slave wages. Now, the Bible tells us in Leviticus 19.13, it says, let the wages of your hireling not stay with you overnight. That's overnight. Yet in this country, we owe people for six months. And we carry on as if it's normal. And the government of Israel can dip hands into somewhere and give out. And we hear that they collect hundreds of millions of security votes that they, can, they are not expected to account for. And then people will work for this country for 35 years. The agreement you have with them is that now they are, they are now weak, they are not able to work anymore, you pay them pensions. They will go and kill they will be protesting, they will be dying on the streets. You won't pay them. And they can see mansions springing up. They can see people living in stupid affluence. They can see exercises of primitive accumulation. And you say, want to fight corruption. Where are you fighting it? The corruption is coming. It hasn't started yet. The point I am making, if we are going to fight corruption, it is not this present government, it has strike. Almost three years, there is no fight going on. How can one of the most powerful ministers in the present cabinet has several cases piled up against the state, against him in the state where he ruled for eight years, where he was speaker for eight years, 16 years in public office, 
We get to the most powerful ministry. He's walking around the country as if he's a God that cannot be questioned. And you say you are fighting corruption. How can we have a situation where you will carry somebody, then you lock him up? Court will say release him, you will say no. Then another person who is now known as the grass cutter, who is number three in government, he will be found in a very compromising situation. Alleged contract uh, preferring and all of that. You will now set up a committee. You don't arrest him, you don't lock him up. You don't ask him to resign. You will now set up a committee inside the same cabinet and appoint people that he himself superintends over in government. And you say they are retiring. And you say you want to fight corruption. That's the correct paradigm is that strategy needs to be changed. Distract Sincerity the strategy is part of the strategy that needs to change. It does. Right. It, it. We're just going to give our last words because we have to be here soon. So maybe you want to make the last words more workable ways we can actually curb correction. Because if I let um, Comrade Sakwe continue like this, I'm even going to lose hope. I don't want to lose The hope. problem is huge. It's a mountain. It's not my fault. Oh. Really it's what I see. I, yeah. mean, I believe in change. That's is there no alternative to a fine mango? Mm. Good question, sir. Oh. Is it the only one that we have to see? There are alternatives. The, the people who are supposed to approve it, they rejected him on many occasions. No, you no. insist on keeping yeah. him there. Okay. So, before we leave now on bribery and corruption, we've analyzed all the problems. We won't give mm. a solution mm. because of our comments. Yeah, so. But I'm going to start with Barrister Allison. So, we'll walk it down with the swing. All right. Yeah. Are you going to suggest anything? Putting a fight over Seriously speaking, I, I, I will challenge the media. You know why I say the media? They have been the conscience of the nation. I know a lot of times when we had a situation, an intractable situation in this country where somebody wanted to go for the third term, it was the media that truncated it. Also, we have situations where we have arbitrariness in government. It was the media that stopped it. I think the media need to take up the issue of this fight against corruption now. And well, first and foremost, stop the media trial, unless they pay for it. Then secondly, because the media cannot work without the civil societies and the professionalized groups. On that alone, I think we can get back on tracks. All right. Bye, yeah, I think I will, um, I will suggest two things. One, the overhaul of the investigative process. Because uh, many of the cases, almost, almost all the cases fail in court because of improper investigation. Uh, although you find that uh, they are so, they do shallow investigation, so it's it difficult. Because it is what you present to the court that the court will use, you know, in, in, in adjudicating. So I, I think that uh, they should be able to come up with unassailable evidence, which the prosecutors can stand on and get the uh, culprits committed. But now we don't have that. And then too, there must be uh, some good relationship what I would call interagency relationship, in particular, between the Federal Ministry of, Ju Ministry of Justice, the DSS and the, EFC and the FCC, they, must be, they, they appear to be working across purposes. And that is why we are not achieving any results. Okay. Right, so Three solutions for me. Okay. Number one, mm -hmm. fix power in this country. If you fix power, we have the kind of technology that can make money move around without seeing cash. The existence of so much cash in the economy is purely corruption. Number two, the idea of gathering all our money, you go and keep it in Abuja. One man, they will start dishing it out, uh, peanuts, and we all go to beg for it, must stop. We want restructuring, we want devolution of powers, we want refederalization, we want fiscal federalism. And then number three, let us, be, let us call a spade a spade. We are peppering too many things. If, even if it's the president, if, if it's wrong, we tell him. If the governor is wrong, we tell him. Nobody hits anybody. You, 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 you speak, you die. You don't speak, you die. Barrister Ibe Woma, the former type of EJ, and also Barrister Samuel Amasin, the owner of my organization to be on the show today. Barrister and corruption is really an epidemic that is eating deep into our system, our vein, our blood every day. Wherever you turn, you find corruption in Nigeria. But we can actually put a stop to it. I believe we can. And from what my guest has said, we need to start by learning patience. We need to start by learning patriotism. We need to understand that if Nigeria is good, we will all benefit from it. If it is bad, we will all suffer from it. So we should work together. And if we can cleanse from the bottom up, good. If we're also going to cleanse from the bottom up down, good. Whichever way works for us, let us start by learning patience and patriotism. And there's a
by several things. We'll be, we meet on this special rendezvous next week. We'll come with another social issue and not just analyze it, we'll definitely give solutions to that. Enjoy yourself. <laughs>